थैंक यू वेरी मच सर नाउ फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेशन आई विल इनवाइट द चेयर पर्सन डॉक्टर निरूपम प्रकाश टू कम ऑन द डायस वहां का रीड हो रहा है
that means it doesn't mean if you are on high uh, fat diet you won't be losing weight. Another study in 34 older adults found that those who followed a ketogenic diet for 8 weeks lost nearly 5 times as much total body fat as those who followed a low fat diet. The increased ketone levels, lower blood sugar levels and improved insulin sensitivity may play, may play a key role in this type of diet. Then, in diabetes and pre-diabetes, the most important, the ketogenic diet may help one lose excess fat, which is closely linked to type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes and metabolic syndrome. One older study found that ketogenic diet improves insulin sensitivity by a whooping 75%. A small study in women with type 2 diabetes also found that following the ketogenic diet for 90 days, significant reduction level of HbA1c to 1.9 to 1.2. Another study in 349 people with type 2 diabetes found that those who followed a ketogenic diet lost an average of 11.9 kg over a period of 2 years. This is an important benefit when considering the link between weight and type 2 diabetes and hence you gain benefit in type 2 diabetes. Heart diseases, ketogenic diet can help improve risk factors like body fat, HDL cholesterol, blood pressure and blood sugar but with the right there we will be discussing later. It has been tried in cancer patients because glucose level is not provided to the cancer cells so it doesn't let them grow and ketone itself helps in shrinkage of the tumor cells. It is being widely used in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, PCOD and brain injury. So you see there is a plethora of cases where this ketogenic diet was being used. If you go on to the long run risk factors of keto diet, you find that with keto diet you, you may be missing nutrient deficiencies may be there, including thiamine, folate, calcium, magnesium. There is two times higher risk of heart disease or other negative cardiac events. This was recently uh, presented in ACC with WCC in March 2023. A low fiber leads to impaired intestinal function and nutrient absorption. 35 increase, 35% increase in adrenal and blood cholesterol. Kidney stone occurrence and 23% increase in the ratio. And 30% increase in neural tube defect, which was pointed by Dr. Shilpa in the previous lecture. Parents and caregivers should be counseled as to the common, occasional and rare adverse events that can happen in short when using keto diets. The GI symptoms as are common with anything that you give, diarrhea, constipation, nausea and vomiting. This limiginia. This is a highly controversial issue with keto diet. While abnormal lipid parameters that we would expect with weight loss are frequently seen, significant hypercholesterol and hypertriglyceridemia are less common. Recently some studies have observed very high level of LDL cholesterol and ECOB levels thus posing risk for cardiovascular event. This study was presented at ABC in New Orleans in March 2023. Hypoglycemia, one or more episodes you can encounter. Lab abnormalities as I said, hyperuricemia leading to kidney stones. Hypoproteinemia, hypomagnesemia. So, while the patient is on keto diet, we have to be vigilant about these micronutrients. Carnitine deficiency levels typically nine in first month. However, deficiency is not common. Bone diseases, osteopenia and osteoporosis, between females, are a cause of concern. Nephrolithiasis, kidney stones, may occur with KD diet in as many as seven percent of people. But if fluid intake is normal, the incidence is much lower. Selenium deficiency in 50% of the children is seen. However, cardiomyopathy and prolonged QT intervals have been described in patients on KDT without selenium deficiency also. So the best part of keto diet is resolution with diet discontinuation. Once KDT is discontinued, most of the adverse events decline. What are the absolute contraindications to keto? Right? Primary carnitine deficiency, pancreatitis, hepatic failure, porphyria, and different fat metabolism defects. Relative contraindications are inability to maintain adequate nutrition, 
inability of parents or caregivers to comply with their fears, the ability to produce rapid weight loss in short run. KD eating patterns severely restrict carbohydrate intake to less than 50 grams. Then only you induce ketosis while increasing protein and fats. Carbohydrate deprivation leads to increase in circulating ketone bodies by breaking down fatty acids and ketogenic amino acids. Ketones are an alternative energy source that alter physiological adaptations. These adaptations have shown to produce weight loss with beneficial health effects by improving glycemia and other metabolic parameters. Several systematic reviews and meta assays of randomized clinical trials have reported on the use of KD in patients with obesity or type 2 diabetes to control weight and improve cardiometabolic parameters. To date, there has been little synthesis or strength. This is important. To date, there has been little synthesis or strength and quality of evidence in aggregate. So still the research is all ongoing and we don't have any authentic much data to say whether this is happening or not. These findings demonstrated that KT could induce a rapid weight loss in initial 6 months after which time further weight loss was hardly achieved. Furthermore, weight loss induced by KT is relatively modest and appears comparable to any dietary intervention that are effective for short term weight loss like intermittent fasting and meditating. So you can use any one of them, not necessarily that you go in for KD for the purpose of weight loss. KD is one of the dietary interventions employed by individuals to achieve rapid weight loss and usually comes with reduced muscle mass. However, KD has been hypothesized to preserve muscle mass following weight loss based on similar mechanisms, including protective effect of ketones and its precursors on muscle tissue. Increased growth hormone secretion stimulated by low blood glucose to increase muscle protein synthesis. Decrease in inflammatory markers favor repair and regeneration of muscles. Improves mitochondrial function and biogenesis. Adequate and good quality dietary protein along with balance of essential amino acids, especially leucine, promotes muscle growth. Improved insulin sensitivity allows more efficient nutrition, partitioning and potentially contributing to muscle growth. By shifting the substrate from sugar to lipid, we are providing greater energy, supporting muscle growth and repair. These are some of the postulated things that could be responsible for maintaining the muscle mass, mass while you are reducing weight. With regards to KD effect on lipid profile, these results demonstrate an effective reduction in serum triglyceride levels with 3 months of lower dietary carbohydrate intake and even further reduction by 12 months. However, recently some studies have shown a rise in LDL cholesterol and ApoB levels, which are a cause of concern and thereby increasing the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Due to lack of insulin, lipolysis increases in fat cells. Of note, the converse has also been observed as a phenomenon known as carbohydrate-induced hypertriglycemia, whereby higher dietary carbohydrate intake leads to higher serum TD levels. Potentially mediated by change in TD clearance and hepatic B2 lipogenesis rates. Most RCT of KD were conducted in patients with limited group of parents, and as those with overweight, obesity, metabolic syndrome, cancer, and refractory epilepsy. In addition, most outcome measures were limited only to surrogate markers. Thus, more clinical trials with a broader scope in population and outcome associated with KD would expand the role of KD in clinical settings. Beneficial associations of practicing KD were supported by moderate to high quality evidence, including weight loss, lower TG levels, decreased HPNC, RER, and decreased seizure frequency. However, KD was associated with clinically meaningful increase in LDL, which is a cause of concern. Now coming to the last few slides of summary and recommendations. Weight loss of 5 to 7 percent of body weight carries a numerous health benefit and should be sought as an initial weight loss uh, initial weight loss goal. But we all know that 10 percent, more than 10 percent, only gives you cardiovascular benefit. Expected rate of weight loss. Weight loss is directly related to the difference between the individual's energy intake and energy expenditure. 
There are significant individual differences and close monitoring of energy intake is essential. The goal of a diet therapy is to reduce the total number of calories consumed. I suggest choosing a dietary pattern of helpful food such as DASH or Mediterranean style diet which has no major restrictions in the macronutrients rather than focusing on a specific nutrient. Because once you are focusing on a specific nutrient, you tend to lose certain benefits of that nutrition. Diets which emphasize reduction in refined carbohydrates, processed meats and food high in sodium and trans fat, moderation in unprocessed red meats, poultry eggs and milk, and high intake of fruits, nuts, fish, vegetables, vegetable oil, minimally processed whole grains, legumes and yogurts are preferred. There is no one single diet that can fit all patients. There are a variety of dietary strategies that can be effective in reducing calorie intake and promoting weight loss. Patients often need guidance in choosing the dietary strategy and that is the right fit for them based on the usual eating habit. As a question asked by the chairperson to the previous speaker, he can we share the diet from Maharashtra to Punjabi? So the answer is, patients often need guidance in choosing the dietary strategy that is the right fit for them based on their usual eating habits and food preferences, preferred learning style and capabilities, and perceived ability to manage hunger, sustain adherence, and maintaining the pleasure of eating. That is very important. If you don't get the pleasure of eating, no one is going to stick to that diet. Dietary adherence is an important predictor of weight loss, irrespective of type of diet. Behavior modification strategies are important to improve dietary compliance with any type of diet. If a low carb diet is chosen, healthy choices should be for fat and protein. If a low fat diet is chosen, the decrease in fat should be accompanied by increase in healthy carbohydrates and protein. Although many individuals have success in losing weight, this last one is very important. Although many individuals have success in losing weight and diet, most subsequently regain much of all the lost weight. Since long term adherence to a weight maintaining diet is probably the most important determinant of success, the optional weight maintaining diet will depend upon preferences and individual factors. Exercise and behavior interventions also may help individuals maintain weight loss. And finally, the ball is in your court to decide which diet will fit on you. I have one question that uh, once uh, a person starts keto, right? after how many days? If you are strictly on a ketogenic diet, that will restrict to 50 or less than that. And then you can estimate by blood ketone level and urine symptoms that I pointed out, they are already there. So they give you a warning that maybe that keto diet has started to Thank you. Any questions from audience? For keto, uh, keto diet. But if you are a vegetarian, then it can be a plant based source. What should be the source of protein in, uh, in uh, protein? Uh, you have nuts, nuts. you have uh, cereals, you have uh, so many things. So, yeah, bean is there, nuts are there. But as far as the fast action of neurons is concerned, it is by glucose only. Thank you very much, Dr. Tanda, for your two set talk. Micronutrients and micronutrients, but you have to imagine what you are eating. You not overeating and secondly you have to be regular with your exercise and physical activities. Thank, Thank you very much. Sir, keto diet, how continue to do? Keto diet, how much time you continue to do? It's not a thing, but it depends on what are your goals. See, initial the goal was either to reduce the refractory epilepsy, but that continues till your medicines are taking care of it. So initially that keto diet helps you. For reduction of weight, you know, what is the goal? Reduce the weight. For reduction of weight. For reduction of weight, you can at least for two years they have shown there is a loss of 12 kgs. But that depends upon your 
goal that is required and that you have set it. But the moment you stop periodizing, then gradually you revert back to the same thing. So it's always better to take a normal diet with regular exercise where you are getting benefits of all the macro and micronutrients. But the vision, what you are eating. Small portion should be used, high quality protein should be used, trans fat should be avoided in our daily diets, plenty of fruits, green leaf vitamin C, that is why I said Mediterranean and Mediterranean and that diet are good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.